Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about mutual TS adoption. So here is the introduction for ourselves. Hello, my name is Li Zhan Zhou. I work at Tetrid. I'm an Envoy maintainer and also in Istio networking and security working group. Hi, my name is Jen Fei, and I'm working at Google. My work is also mostly focused on Istio Security Working Group. So we are going to talk about what is MTRS and why mutual tiers is very hard and what customer challenge it's going to face. Um, and uh, based on that challenges, we are going to explain some of our op approaches to uh, how to optimize and improve user experience. And in the end, we are going to talk about the uh, summary and also some lessons we learned during this uh, API improvement for MTS adoption journey. And uh, last section, when we have time, we are going to have a Q&A session. So um, first, we're going to explain why, what is MTS and why it matters. Um, so mutual TS is an extension of the TRS. And uh, it's essentially a security check on both client and the server side. The uh, client is checking the server's uh, identity by a X509 certificate. And the uh, server is also asking for a uh, certificate from a client. The, this will establish the secure to service to service authentication and the transport layer. Also, based on the X509 certificate information, the, ser the server can derive some uh, client information like namespace and service account to do some further authorization check. So if MTRS is good, why, what makes it very hard to adopt? T let's take this as an example. Um, on the left side, uh, we have client and a server, a full service, and the traffic are in plain text. After the customer adopts the um, sidecar by injecting the envoy to the application, we can now establish a mutual TS by uh, adding this in between the server and client envoy. So this way, you don't have to change your client and the server application code at all. You get MTS for free. Everything is transparent to you. But in the real world, things are not that simple. So if you look at this diagram, you can see on the right-hand side, the bar service actually has V1 and V2 uh, two versions. And the V1 version uh, is a legacy release, for example, and it doesn't have the Envoy sidecar rolled out. So if the client Envoy is only sending the mutual TS traffic for the bar service, it's gonna fail as when it reach out to the bar V1 pod endpoint. And similarly, on the counterpart of the client side story, we have a similar situation. The client one does not have the Envoy sidecar, and the client two does have. When the server full service Envoy only accepts the MTS, then the plain text traffic request from the client one will start to fail. So to make things even more complicated, you can see both things can happen at the same time. So we have a partial sidecar rollout on both client and the server side. And you can see two of the request kind of situation out of the four just be fail. So um, how can we solve this problem? One way to think about it is, well, if you cannot accept the mutual TS uh, between the client and server envoy unless uh, envoys are everywhere, why not we just wait, right? On the, um, we 
start from the plain text by not doing any of the MutualTS at all. On the left side, when you start to ramp up the Envoy uh, injection in, the, in your service mesh, and you only start to do MutualTS once you finish the um, sidecar rollout um, everywhere. And at that time, you tra track this progress, the then flip the uh, entire fleet from the plain text to mutual tiers and roll it out all at once. However, um, in the real world, this is almost impossible to do. We all know the complexity of a enterprise deployment that you always have some kind of corner case where some team's service would not be able to adopt new technology. Sidecar can just not be put there. You cannot, uh, this will never happen, basically. So, um, Istio is doing, initially, is doing some initial API improvements on this. Uh, in this example, you can see the full service, both its client and server application have already finished the Envoy Sidecar rollout. So, um, in that case, we don't have to wait for bar clients to be finished. We can just adopt the mutual TS for a full service. So, we have a, two APIs on the Istio side. Why is called destination rule, which is essentially a API configure the client envoy um, cluster behavior. For example, like load balancing, like uh, circuit breaking, and also Istio uh, mutual TS can be configured here. Um, we have a uh, in this case we specify the service host as full and the TLS mode as Istio mutual to let the client envoy send mutual TLS traffic. On the server side, we have an authentication policy, and this policy also specifies the service as full and a single Boolean flag as to enable the mutual TS. Uh, that here is our very basic approach, our baseline of how to solve this problem. Now, later on, we'll start to talk about how Istio and Envoy make some improvements. So um, in the server side improvement, this is in the case of the client side car is partially deployed. We do the TLS sniffing that detects the TLS and plain text traffic. So in this case, server will be able to serve both case, whether the client have Envoy sidecar or not. In the Istio API, this is uh, expressed in permissive mode and compared to the strict mode, the server only accept mutual TS config. In Envoy config, this is showed in the snippet in the slide here. We have the uh, TOS inspector listener filter and we have to define two uh, filter chain with different filter match. One matches to the TOS traffic and another matches to the plain text traffic. So how it works, basically the TS um, sniffing, the TS inspector um, take a look on the first packet that sent from client uh, to check whether it's a client hello in uh, TLS. If that's the case, uh, the TOS inspector will extract the some TLS metadata, search whether it's TLS, what ALPN it is US used, uh, what the SNI in the client hello message. There's some drawback of this um, approach. For example, for some of the server first protocol, such as MySQL, this case, the first packet won't arrive uh, when TS inspector is working, but the traffic is not forward to upstream server. So in this case, we introduced some timeout in the listener filter, but it still adds a timeout to the uh, such protocol. When timeout happens, the server side envoy tra forward the traffic as plain text, and then server respond with the first message back to client. It keeps clients such as MySQL works, but add uh, latency to the all the all the to the time timeout.
So in this case, um, we, we address the two different needs. One is permissive, one is strict. That is, the in, once you're done with the all rollout on the client side, you can switch the TOS policy to strict mode. In that case, the server won't do the TOS, uh, won't uh, detect plain text traffic. That means you are now fully secured in the full service that won't get plain text traffic. So in Istio site configuration, this is this um, expressed as destination rule and authentication policy. So once server side rollout finished, the client destination rule should be still mutual and the permissive should be changed to strict. This also address some config complexity in the previous, like the manual config approach. Since the Istio destination rule is uh, an override base, in this example, if you have some fine-tuned uh, connection timeout in full service, and you apply the uh, cluster-wide Istio mutual, it won't apply to full service, so it will break there as well. You have to do something like the bar service to have the traffic policy. And also you have to apply that uh, to the, all the subsets as well. This is a uh, complexity of the Istio destination rule itself, but this make mutual TOS much harder because you have to know about the auto override and applying them correctly. So in the client side, uh, this is for the case that server doesn't have the fully uh, site part deployed. This is based on the new feature we introduced in Envoy called endpoint labeling. Uh, transport matches was added to the cluster config, which defines uh, can define multiple transport socket, which basically uh, allows you to specify multiple TOS config or plain text config. And in the endpoints that uh, delivered for the for that cluster, just a label um, called mutual TOS ready. So when it is true, it matches to the transport socket defined in the cluster to initiate the TOS connection to those uh, server workload with sidecar deployed. For those without server envoy deployed, it still uses the raw buffer, means it uses the um, plain text communication. So combine those two server side and uh, client side approach, you can see we addressed all the situation here that whether client have uh, Envoy or not, whether it's partially deployed or fully deployed, uh, all the server and client can talk to each other. Um, for the for the legacy case, like both side doesn't have Envoy deployed, it can still communicate, um, of course. So we start, uh, so as a journey of the um, adoption, we start with, you can start with permissive mode by default. And then this happens automatically when you start deploying uh, sidecars to your server and client. Once your rollout is done um, on, the, on the service side, you should be able to switch that to strict mode then you're fully secured on that service. Now I'm gonna to, uh, pass back to Jenfei to tell more about the lesson we learned from this. Thanks, Lisa, for uh, explaining what kind of the details and the mechanisms for improving the issue mutual TRS adoption. So now I'm talk gonna talk about some lessons when we learn, go through this journey ourselves. The first of the first that Service mesh sidecar rule doesn't take all at once. 
it takes time. People try new technology gradually, and there will be quite some period when your service mesh consists of both workloads with and without sidecar, and this could take quite some time. We need to have good user experience in terms of the configuration uh, amount you need to do for you to adopt mutual DS. Uh, that brings up to the second point. Um, we One way to look at this problem is that customer can solve this problem on their own if they just are willing to write more kind of configuration. For example, one of the alternatives as our, compared to our approach is that um, you can create some subset in the destination rule. And the one subset corresponds to the server workloads without uh, Envoy sidecar and one that has the Envoy sidecar. You can also specify the percentage weight between this subset when doing the load balancing. And uh, of course, this is very manual and uh, introduce a lot of config toy problem. Um, and uh, the next point is that don't forget about security. Even you just want to focus the tr transition and make user experience good. Uh, that's why we realized there's two modes. In the beginning, you need to need permissive and make things very uh, smooth. But once you're done with the sidecar rollout, things want to be fully secure. Only strict MTS is what you want. Um, in the end, one last point is that the real world traffic is really complicated. And we hit all kind of corner cases when we design these mechanisms. For example, on the server side, uh, when we are doing the permissive by TR sniffing, we found sometimes the legacy client can send a HTTPS request to the server. And uh, if we are just doing the transport socket match, uh, transport um, TR sniffing based on the transport protocol as TRS, that will match to the wrong filter chain and uh, trying to terminate a HTTPS traffic with Istio mutual TS configuration. And of course, things will start to fail. Um, on the client side, we have hit some similar issues. Um, the endpoint labeling uh, solution only works for the endpoint discovery typed Envoy clusters. And Envoy have other kind of clusters like original destination. And sorry, this is a typo on the slides that uh, we also have DNS resolved kind of clusters. Those kind of clusters doesn't go through the endpoint labeling uh, selection code paths and the workflow. So you cannot have this automatically uh, detect endpoint MTS ready behavior. Um, next is our, just to summarize all we present today, um, we solve this MTS adoption problem by two parts. The first is the server envoy. We make it both support MTS and the plain text. This is done by the envoy level TS sniffing in as a network layer filter. And uh, on the Istio API side, we introduce permissive and strict for two kinds of needs. On the client side, we introduce the, make the client envoy able to send uh, both plain text and uh, uh, mutual TS traffic based, based on the server endpoints labeling results. Um, the outcome for these imp improvements is that we remove the client side destination rule configuration totally if you just want to get MTS done. And these two things combined together is that you start from the permissive and the auto MTS in the beginning. All you need to do is one switch from permissive to strict for your entire MTS journey, which is much, much more simplified. All right. And Today, that is our today's presentation. Uh, here now is the Q&A sessions. Feel free to ask any questions. Thanks. Um, I, uh, my name is Jianfei. I see a question are posted on the uh, room that is asking, is it easy to renew the MTS certificate in the whole cluster? Uh, in Istio's case, that we have the entire uh, public key infrastructure to 
uh, responsible for key rotation and delivery from the control plane to the um, from the control plane to the uh, envoy sidecar. So uh, the key certificate of the workloads are rotated every uh, for a short period of time. Yeah. And uh, I see another question posted. The original question is, if some of the apps use the MTS already and then some rely on Envoy, what is the easiest way to support these traffic patterns? Plain text will not, not allow during transition. Um, so uh, on the server side that we, uh, for the M workers that have the Envoy sidecar, we have, uh, the ARPM match with is still dash uh, our own ARPM so that that won't conflict with user their own MTS that offer you a um, support both the application that has speaking the its own MTS versus that we are trying to um, terminate MTS but uh, we cannot control the workload that does not have the um, MTS, uh, Envoy sidecar. Go ahead. So, yeah, I can answer the next question. Um, can use of mutual TS lead to lack of visibility since the traffic is now encrypted? There's no way to do traffic inspection on application traffic. Is there? Um, so, yeah, there's a debugging uh, techniques still can be used um, with Envoy um, to uh, inspect application uh, traffic using Envoy debug feature, or you can still um, try to see what the traffic in plain text between sidecar and the uh, and the application by inspecting the local traffic traffic, um, but by inspecting local host traffic. Okay, I think we Okay, there's a follow up for that one. Can traffic inspection be done for encrypted application traffic? Um if uh, if the, your application encrypted the traffic itself, you sh you need to um somehow by using uh, application specific logic to export the TRS keys, um, I mean the ex encryption keys, there's some way to do that and then having the cap like um, TCP done for any traffic cap capturing stuff and combine them, you should be able to do the inspection. So yes, it will be more uh, steps to inspect the traffic when things are encrypted. Okay, we will um, on Slack for uh, more questions if you have more. Um, we'll monitor Slack for more questions. Thank you.